Okay, welcome to the one o'clock class meeting, combined junior and senior class meeting. Um, later on in the school year, we will have one specific to the senior class, um, but a lot of this information pertains to both of you. And for the juniors, I figure it can't hurt for you to hear some of this stuff that is upcoming. Um, so we will go ahead and begin. So welcome everybody. Um, topics to be discussed today, we're going to go over the graduation requirements and hopefully everybody received a copy of your academic history or if you're brand new to us, um, a copy of your high school transcript so that you can reference those as we go through um, the graduation requirements. A lot of you guys are coming from out of state, out of district. Um, so there's multiple reasons why we're going to go through that, um, but I need an extra set of eyeballs on those requirements, um, and you need to be aware of what it is that you need to accomplish between now and the May of your graduation year. So we're going to talk about the academic histories and E2020 update for those students that are needing some credit retrieval, um, senior letters, Bright Future Scholarship, SAT, some testing information, um, dual enrollment, college applications, and the FAFSA. Uh, reminder about semester ending, graduation information for seniors, and then some scholarships that I would like for you to be able to check out, even the juniors. So let's go ahead and begin. Um, I just want to start by introducing myself to you in case you don't know who I am. I'm Maria Baker. I'm your school counselor. This is my contact information, and I just want to make sure that all of you know how to contact me. Sometimes I'll get some messages. I've been trying to reach you. I've sent you multiple emails, and I'm not sure if that's going to a VSA email or perhaps to my Google phone number that I use um, during COVID, but these, this is my contact. This is my email. This is the only email that I check and read. And um, this is my office phone number, 461-8493. So please, um, that is how the best way to contact me. If I don't answer, leave me a message and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, my office hours here are Monday through Friday from 8 to 3.30. So if you try and reach me after four, chances are you're going to have to leave me a message. Okay, graduation requirements. We'll go ahead and get into that now, and you guys can access your academic histories. Um, the state of Florida says that you need 24 to earn 24 credits in order to receive your high school diploma. Um, of those 24 credits, four of them have to be English. You have to earn four math credits. One must be algebra one, one must be geometry. After those two years, you can pretty much choose your math sequence based on um, what your plans are after high school. If you're university bound, you'll do algebra two and most likely pre-calculus. Um, it just depends on your track. Uh, you do need three science credits. Of those three science credits, biology has to be taken. Um, the other two can be whatever area you're interested in, whether it be forensics or anatomy or marine. Um, if you are university bound or if you are going for the Bright Future Scholarship, I highly recommend you do more than the three years and do that fourth year of science to make your academic, to your transcript um, stand out potentially. So um, we need three years of social studies, one credit of world history, which is typically taken in the ninth or 10th grade, um, U.S. history, which is taken in the sophomore junior year, and then a semester of economics and a semester of government. Those are the three social science classes that you have to have in order to receive your diploma. You'll need one performing or practical art on your, on your transcript, one credit of hope and eight electives that equals 24 credits. So that is the 24 uh, credit uh, diploma. We do have an 18 credit Excel diploma um, and that's everything minus the credit of hope and a few more, uh, less electives. So all the other requirements have to be met. You just don't need a hope class and you don't need as many elective classes. Along with 
the 24 or the 18 credits requirement, you do have to pass two exams, um, one being the Algebra 1 EOC and the second being the 10th grade FSA. So if you are brand new to the district or perhaps you missed testing due to COVID, you didn't come into the building, um, we are in the process. Uh, we just finished a round of retakes and there will be another window coming up in December, which I'll share with you um, in a little bit. Uh, a 2.0 minimum unweighted GPA is also a requirement to receive the diploma. So those are your graduation requirements. Now, there are multiple ways that you can meet the test score for the 10th grade FSA. For any of you juniors or seniors that just transferred in from out of state or out of district, if you do have an SAT or an ACT score, we would need an ACT score of 18 on your combined English and reading subtests, an SAT 480 on the reading section, and then of course the FSA, the cut score is a 350 for the level three. The Algebra EOC cut score is a 497 for the level three passing. Um, you juniors um, and seniors, you can also meet that requirement by sitting for the PSAT and earning a 430 on the math section or a 420 on the real SAT and there's a 16 ACT composite score. And we will be offering an SAT coming up here as well as the PSAT, which I'll get into in just a few minutes. So those are the requirements. Um, you guys are probably fully aware of this, but A's um, equal 4.0 averaged into your GPA. So for every A that you make, 4.0 is added into your cumulative grade point average. Um, B is worth three quality points, and that's an 89 to an 80 etc. If you take honors courses, you will get a 0 0.02 added to your GPA. You get a little bit more credit um, for taking those more challenging courses. And then for dual enrollment and AP classes, your GPA will be added on an additional 0 0.4 um, weighted for each semester that you take a class. So that's how sometimes at graduations, you see kids that are graduating with a 5.5 GPA that's because they loaded up on some of these honors um, and dual enrollment courses. Um, the PSAT for you juniors, it is coming up Wednesday, October 13th. Maybe you came in and took that test as a sophomore last year. Um, it is free for sophomores, so I know a lot of sophomores like to take it. However, we were in the COVID time and things were crazy. Um, the PSAT is a practice SAT test, and it's given once a year each October. Um, juniors, if you're college bound, if you want to go for that Bright Future Scholarship, I highly recommend you pay the $17. Come in October 13th, take that practice test. You'll get a baseline. You'll see what you would have scored had you sat for the real SAT. You get your results back, and then you can use those results to go onto the College Board account, set up Khan Academy, and do some test prep. So it's a much better price than the $55 or $60 that the SAT costs. Um, it will be here in the school district office at the north entrance on Wednesday, October 13th. And I do believe Mr. Riley sent out an email with a link to register for the practice SAT for you juniors. Um, if you didn't get it, shoot me an email and I'll be happy to share that with you. It is limited seating, so it's first come, um, first serve. So please do sign up. It is a good practice um, and then if you do really well as a junior, you could potentially qualify as a national scholarship semifinalist or finalist, which is um, a lot of potential scholarship money. So keep that in mind. If you need the link to register, please do so earlier rather than later because those spots will fill up pretty quickly. For you seniors, any of you seniors that are brand new to the district or who have not passed or taken the Algebra EOC or the 10th grade FSA, on the same day, Wednesday, October 13th, we will be giving a senior SAT school day test. This test is only for seniors that do not have an FSA 
and or an algebra EOC score required for graduation. This test is a time and a half, so it's an extended time SAT. Therefore, it's not college reportable. So you can't use this SAT to send your scores to um, your colleges or for Bright Futures. This is specifically to meet the graduation requirement of the FSA and or the East EOC. So it is time and a half. You do get extended time. It's free for you. You don't need to register other than completing the link that Mr. Riley sent specifically to you seniors to invite you. Um, there's a good turnout. Uh, several, many of you have already registered for that test, which I thank you. Um, if you have not yet, if you did not get that information regarding the senior SAT on Wednesday, October 13th, again, shoot me an email. I'll be happy to share that link for you. Again, this is only for seniors that need an FSA and or an algebra EOC score, and it is not college reportable. It is free, so please take advantage of this opportunity. This is one day test to potentially knock out five days worth of testing. So in case you can't make it, or even if you wanna just increase your, your odds for passing the test, please mark your calendar for the FSA. Retake the winter window will be November 30th for the writing, December 1st and December 2nd for the reading. That will be first thing in the morning. Um, so that will be another opportunity for you juniors and seniors to, to sit for this test and knock this requirement out. The algebra geometry EOC, which really you just need to worry about the algebra, um, will be offered December 7th and December 8th in the morning. So guys, please mark your calendars. Um, I would encourage you to come in for the SAT, those seniors um, on October 13th and then come in in November, December, if we don't have your scores back yet. Again, just to, to increase those odds and get in the, the, the scores that you need in order to receive your diploma um, come graduation. Okay, so academic histories, I just kind of want to show you how to read them. There's a lot of information um, and after this year, we're, we're doing away with this academic history, the style which I've used for years and years and I love. Um, it breaks down the graduation requirements by subject area. If I sent you a transcript, it's because I don't have an academic history for you and transcripts go by school year. So academic histories go by um, subject area. So you can go ahead and look at your academic history. Um, if you're a senior, you should all have credit for English one, one full credit of English one, English two, et cetera. Um, you'll notice that this youngster here failed the first semester of English two, retook that class, um, changed that grade from a F to a B, which that F is R'd out and no longer part of the grade point average. So if you guys are junior or senior and you see that you're missing English one or two or three, that's something that we're, we're gonna need to get you on credit retrieval and have you make that up before you can graduate, obviously. Um, the next subject, it goes down to math. It will show you all the courses that you've taken, the grades earned for each semester, science, your social studies, your hope, your performing practical art. Everybody, please make sure you've got a performing or practical art. Sometimes some kids can make it all the way to their senior year without having taken one of those courses. You do need to have one of those courses, um, a credit of a performing or practical art. If you were to take any foreign languages, it would be here under electives. And I forgot to mention under graduation requirements, that foreign language is not a requirement to graduate from high school and receive your high school diploma. However, it is a requirement if you plan on applying to Florida Gulf Coast University, for example, after high school. If you plan on applying to any of the state universities or applying going for the Bright Future Scholarship, you will need a minimum of two years of the same language. 
Um, otherwise, it is not necessary. But if you're a junior and you haven't started your languages yet and you know, for example, Florida Gulf Coast is where you want to go, we need to make sure and get that um, class on your schedule so that you can knock that out. So down here at the bottom left hand side of your academic history, you will see your credits to date. You'll notice on the first column all the way down at the bottom, it will tell you your current number of credits earned. And then up top, you'll see credits earned to date and credits needed. So clearly we want to get the column under credits needed to zero. We want that to be down to zero. By the time you graduate, you'll see that there's a column there, a separate column for fine arts. Make sure that you have one full credit completed um, underneath the fine art category. Don't worry so much. Don't worry about the electives at all. Um, that's not so much of an issue as is the academics um, and the, the fine art credit for graduation. If you come over here to the right hand side on the bottom of your academic history, you will notice um, your GPA. So there is your current as of today, your current unweighted GPA. Um, and if you've taken any honors or dual enrollment courses, you will have a weighted GPA. If you see that your unweighted GPA is below a 2.0, then you are most likely in need of retrieving some credits for graduation. And once you retake those courses, your grade will be replaced with, ever, with whatever grade you make, which hopefully will be an A or a B, and that will help your GPA shoot up. Okay, and last thing I wanna point out to you on your academic history, if you look up on the top right-hand corner across from your name, um, you will see the test scores required for graduation. So in that first column, FSA reading, um, hopefully you'll have a pass. If you don't have anything there at all, that means you've never taken the test. Um, if you have a score, um, I, I think it shows a score if you did not pass it, the same for the algebra. You might see an E for exempt or an S for satisfied, um, but those are the two tests um, that we need to make sure have been met um, either through an SAT, ACT, PSAT, or some way um, for graduation. So the geometry, biology, US history, those EOCs have been waived the past couple of years. If you're in US history this school year, you will be taking the, the history EOC in the springtime, the same for geometry. Um, you will need to sit for that EOC unless something happens come end of the year. So that is your academic history, guys. Um, some of you may have given me transcripts from out of state. Um, some of you may have taken a class on Florida Virtual School, and you'll see that it's missing. And if that's the case, you just need to let me know. And I can go ahead and have that added onto your transcript for you. Um, so if you took geometry during the last two years and you did not sit for the geometry EOC, you should have your geometry credit. So if you look under your map and it says one credit of geometry and you did not take the EOC, that means you've got the credit. Um, you just were exempt from having to take that EO end of course exam that school year. Okay, so if you have any individual questions, if you want to discuss your academic history or your graduation requirements, please just reach out to me and we can do that um, individually. Okay, moving on. Okay, so great news for you students that need the E2020 to um, retrieve some credits. We are ready to begin. Mr. Metzner, um, who is my assistant here today, um, is going to be your teacher for this course. Um, Mr. Metzner, I'll just let you take it from here for a minute. Yeah, so essentially if you're needing to retrieve a credit uh, recover something that you may have not gotten uh, a passing score on, you'll be signed up for um, a possible E2020 or Edgenuity course. And so we run all of that through Edgenuity. Uh, I will be reaching out and supervising uh, to make sure that you're getting everything done that you need to get done so that you can graduate and move on and be successful. 
Um, I am not the teacher of record as far as going through every uh, module with you. Those are things you can do so it's asynchronous. Uh, but make sure that you are getting your work done. Otherwise, I'm going to be contacting you quite often uh, to the point where it's going to get uh, a little bit irritating. So just make sure that we're staying on pace and we're getting things done. And I've already seen a lot of students already active in it. So Edgenuity. Uh, that's under instructional resources. It's a folder, instructional apps on your on your launch pad. Edge Annuity is what it's called. Uh, so if you have a course, it'll be in there and you can go ahead and log in and work as much as you want to, as often as you want to. And you'll get them your contact info should they need you to unlock a quiz or, or move on? Well, they're going to pass all their tests, so they wouldn't <laughs> have me to unlock anything. But my email is in the chat. Uh, just a moment here, which is the best way to contact me, um, and I will put in a. I will, I'm going to make a Google Classroom as well, so it gives some resources for people, so they'll have that uh, to fall back on if needed. Okay, so um, most of you just need like one, uh, maybe two courses, and some of you need several courses. We're only doing one course at a time, guys, so have that be your strategy. Just work on one class, knock it out. Um, it is a class on your schedule, so hopefully you're on track and on pace with all of your other classes um, that you have on your schedule. And now is the time you can go ahead and it's a single log on for the E2020. And again, Mr. Metzner will be your teacher and it is active and ready to go as of today. Um, a couple of the fine arts, um, examples of fine arts is a question in the chat box, creative photography, um, digital info technology, um, journalism, there are several. And on the course selection sheet, I try to put in parentheses what courses will meet that fine or practical art. Um, okay, so moving on, I don't think any other questions. If you did not get an academic history, I must not have seen you your registration. Um, so if you wanna email me after the meeting today, I'll be happy to shoot that to you. Okay, so um, for seniors, letters are being sent out. Some have already been dispatched. Please be on the lookout. This is just me letting you know what you need for graduation, um, what you need to complete between now and May. So there's no surprises. Everybody is on the same page. Um, a signature and a return is not necessary. Um, if I do want it, I will have stated it on the bottom of the letter, but there is a place for you to sign and it says to return. If you want to sign and scan that to me, that's great. But this is just really for you to have a visual of what it is that I see you needing um, for graduation. So that will be coming out in the mail. Some of you may have already received them. Okay, so I wanna talk real briefly, you guys, about the Bright Future Scholarship. This is a merit scholarship um, that is a really great opportunity for our best and brightest students to stay in the state of Florida. If you have a 3.5 core grade point average, and you'll notice the classes over to the left of what they count. So there's no elective courses. So your core GPA is gonna be different than what your cumulative GPA is um, on, your, on your academic history or on your transcript. Um, if you can earn a 3.5 GPA on the core, have 100 community service hours logged and get a 29 composite on the ACT or 1330 combined on the SAT, you can earn 100% of your tuition paid for at a state, a public state university. So like Florida State, University of Florida, Florida Gulf Coast, um, any of those public schools, if you get this, these three criteria, you can have 100% of your tuition paid for each semester, plus a, I think a $300 stipend. So it's a really great opportunity. This is totally merit-based. It doesn't matter what your financial need is. Um, Underneath that, the, the next scholarship is what's called the Florida Medallion Scholarship. And that criteria is just a little bit lower. You need a 3.0 core GPA or higher. 
a 25 composite on the ACT or a 1210 combined on the SAT. The service hours go down to 75 hours um, logged and that is approximately, I wanna say like 75% of your tuition um, at a state school. So juniors, if you come in and take the practice SAT in October, that will give you a really good baseline. And then you can schedule a time to take the real SAT, perhaps sometime in the second semester, March, May, or June. For you seniors, you have until that June 4th SAT testing date. So you have till after graduation to continue to try and get the test score that you need. So I would recommend not waiting till the last minute in case you need to do some prep. You'll see over here the deadlines that you need to register by in order to sit for um, that test. So they are, spots are filling up pretty quickly. Um, if you know that you want to test, I would recommend you go ahead and re reserve your spot, get registered early, um, because there is limited seating, they are filling up, and you might find that they'll try and send you down to Collier County or to Charlotte or Henry County, where there might be some room. So again, please try to register well before the deadline, um, just to secure the spot in the high school that you want to go to. But these are the tests that you would need to go to the testing site, create an account, pay the fee, upload your photo, print your test ticket, and then report to those places, um, whichever high school's nearest to you that's offering it um, on that test day. So any seniors, there's a lot of you guys out there that have the grade point average. Um, you may need to be working on some community service hours. And if that is the case, please email me. Um, I will send to you this document, which basically is just approval for your community service hours for Bright Futures. Um, it has to be at a non-for-profit. So you need to have this approved um, before you can start earning hours to go toward the Bright Futures Scholarship. Now you can volunteer um, and do your own community service. If you want to work at the volunteer at the hospital because you're, you're interested in the medical field, um, you can do all of that for your own resume because college applications and other scholarships will, will ask, what have you done? Um, so you're more than welcome to do any and all of that, but specifically for the Bright Future Scholarship, it does need to be for nonprofit. I do need to approve that for you. This is the document. There's a place for a proposal and a reflection. So the proposal you would send in to me when you send in your plan, what do you hope to get out of this service? Um, we'll all sign it. And then at the end, you can turn in your, your log to me along with a, a short reflection on your experience. So I, I want to recommend to you seniors, if you're shooting for this Bright Future Scholarship, let's get a plan in place today um, so that hopefully you'll have enough time to get those hours in. But if not, if something happens at the end of the year and, and the DOE says, um, as long as you had a plan, you may have only gotten 10 hours completed, but but due to COVID or due to circumstances that wasn't possible, that I can give you those credits as long as we have a plan, as long as you, you were trying to do something. So again, um, this is the document that you will need in order to come um, complete your Bright Futures community service hours. So reach out to me, let me know if you have any questions and I do need to make sure that the place that you want to do your service hours will count for the Bright Future Scholarship. Okay, so just to recap, it is not a requirement to graduate. I do get that question a lot from parents coming in from out of state or district. It is not a requirement for high school graduation. It is a requirement for the Bright Future Scholarship. College applications will often ask, what have you done in high school in your career? Um, there's a lot of benefits to doing community service. United Way is a great, um, a great organization. Um, you know, the holidays are coming up here soon, and, and there's a lot of places that, 
that will need some, some volunteers. So um, again, any non-for-profit humane society, um, if you need help finding some, I can share some websites with you that, that might help you. Um, so that's it on the community service hours. Uh, okay, so the Bright Future Scholarship application opens up October 1st. This is a one-time application for you guys that are going to go for this scholarship. It is good for three years, so if you don't use it next year, you want to take a semester or a year off, um, it's good. So I would definitely recommend you need to have this com the application completed. It is a one-time deal. So once you complete this application just one time, that will allow me to send your information up to Tallahassee at the end of the first semester. Um, and don't worry if you don't have your test score yet or you don't have your community service hours, you will be re-evaluated um, at the end of the first semester and then again at the end of the second semester. So you don't need to have your, your, your um, criteria met. It is a work in progress. So if you don't have the scholarship in the, this fall semester, or you have the merit medallion scholarship already, which some of you do, and you retest and get that higher test score, you will automatically be bumped up to the, the higher um, scholarship. So don't procrastinate. This is kind of an easy thing to do. It's a one-time deal. Um, and then once you do receive that scholarship, that scholarship will follow you from semester to semester. So um, as long as you keep your GPA up, you'll have that money to help you get through school. Um, it's a great opportunity. So that application um, will be opening up October 1st on Friday, and it's you have until the, the end of August um, to complete the application, but please don't wait that long. Okay, so I just wanna mention a couple of things for you juniors, especially do know that the Fort Myers Technical College and the Cape Coral Technical Colleges do have um, dual enrollment opportunities. Um, FMIT I know has welding and electricity and refrigeration. Um, the Cape Coral Tech offers uh, medical assisting, um, medical administrative specialist, digital design, electronic technology. So do know that there are dual enrollment opportunities at the technical colleges. And we would definitely need to talk about and plan that um, early on um, because those programs fill up so quickly and they do want you to be under two credits um, required for graduation. So this definitely takes some planning. So any of you juniors, um, who may be interested in that, please don't wait to contact me and we can talk about getting you set up for your senior year. Um, FSW, a lot of our students are taking classes currently out at the FSW. There are GPA and test score requirements. Um, for you guys that are in those courses right now, registration for spring will open up November 4th. So we'll get together that, that week. If you are still in the process or you need to retest, please go ahead and do that now, sooner rather than later. Um, Dr. Stirk at FSW has set up a, a pretty easy website to kind of walk you through the steps. Um, obviously, step number one is to apply. Um, step number two is to test or submit test scores. Then you'll need to complete the accelerated pathways orientation because that will explain to you the differences between being a dual enrollment student and being a real in college student, high school graduate in college. Um, and then once you're done with that, we've got all that completed, then you and I will go ahead and use the DocuSign to get you registered for your courses. So I am offering um, a dual enrollment session this Wednesday, not next Wednesday, this Wednesday, September 29th. I'll have two sessions. I'll have one at noon and one at 6 p.m. So your parents can hopefully be there. I did send out a messenger link with that information um, already. So hopefully you've received that and you can uh, register and join with me so we can talk about the advantages, the disadvantages, um, 
the criteria, the process, and all that good stuff. So that will be Wednesday, September 29th. For my juniors, do know that next school year, for your senior year, Florida Gulf Coast does have a, a great accelerated college experience program. Um, it is a university, so the criteria is a little bit more, um, uh, it's a little bit higher than, than what you would need at FSW. Uh, they do have informational meetings um, several times during the school year, and this is part of the application. So you and a parent or guardian would need to attend one of these information settings so you can hear all about the program and make sure that this is gonna be a good fit for you. Again, you will need to have an SAT or ACT score. So you'll want to make sure and get that calendar and sign up. The application is due like March, mid-March usually. Um, so we'll wanna make sure that we, we have a test score um, and send that in. I've got several juniors um, and seniors that are attending that program uh, this school year. So the difference between FGCU besides its university is that they do like for students to be out there, to be on their campus. So for many of my students, you know, logistically, transportation wise, they may not have a car or whatnot. So a lot of my students will choose FSW with some transferring to FGCU. Um, in their senior year. So this is only one time you can enroll into FGCU and they only accept students in the fall. So for any juniors that are out there in FGCU, you know that's where you wanna be and you're accelerated academically and you're ready for this challenge. Um, it's a wonderful opportunity. And then if you, when you stay there, you get a, an additional stipend. They'll, they'll pay you money to continue to study there and you can learn about that at the information settings. So know that that is an option for you. And then for any juniors, if you're looking on your academic history and you see that you just need a credit of English and or a credit of math next school year, and you, you university or college isn't in your goal, um, and you wanna graduate early, go to the military, whatever it is, we need to have those conversations. Now, there are several of you seniors that are planning on being Jan grads, um, completing all your credits in the first semester. And that's great if you don't want to access any dual enrollment if college isn't um, in your plans for right now. But do know that we do have a lot of students that choose to graduate early. So here's a reminder, semester two begins January 10th this year. Uh, everybody should be about 36% about there in all of your courses. The quarter one ends October 14th or you need to be approximately 50%. So please make sure you're on pace, um, working in all your classes every day, about an hour each day so that all of you finish your courses um, and get your semester credit at the end of the semester. Please remember you need to have six classes on your schedule. The best way to check that would be to check your focus account. We have multiple platforms. We've got Google, we've got eDynamics, Edgenuity, VSA. So um, please check and make sure for semester two at the start of day one that you all have six classes on your schedule. Seniors, I'm sorry. Um, you may not need them all, but it's part of being a full-time student. So if you're missing a sixth class or two for um, next semester, please reach out to me. Let's make sure that your schedule is straight on day one. Okay, so graduation information. There's not a whole lot of information to give out to you seniors yet. The school board has not uh, approved any dates and or locations for this, um, this class of 2022. As soon as it's out there and announced, um, we'll let you know. So we do have a graduation ceremony. It's beautiful ceremony. It's usually pretty small, um, very personal. Um, I get a lot of questions about senior pictures. We do not do senior pictures here. We don't have a yearbook. So you're welcome to go have your senior photos taken with whoever, wherever you would like, if that's what you'd like to do. Um, Mr. Metzner will be putting together a graduation slideshow of all of our participants. Uh, Mr. Metzner, you can talk about that. Yes, please. So 
uh, if you can't go and sit for a senior photo, which many many of you were not asking you to do that, but if you want to, you can. Um, but I'm asking for a professional photo. Normally, it's a photo like a like from here up, just a professional photo, like it would be in the yearbook. Uh, something that represents who you are and is very professional and dignified and respectful. Um, I spent a lot of time last year trying to make some uh, duck faces and some weird stuff look professional. That was difficult, uh, but I'm the one that prepared all of that for last year, and I'm going to be doing the same thing this year. So I'm asking if you are thinking about making a senior photo for yourself, have someone else take that. It's not a selfie. Um, make sure you're dressed nicely. Um, doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, full, but just make sure, please, that it's respectful. I can't stress that enough. And in the Google form that I'll send out later this year, it will actually give you some uh, details about how to do that. That is, if you didn't sit for a photo yourself. Okay. Okay, so that information to you seniors, that will be coming out as we get closer to that time. So you've got plenty of time, just a heads up that that's coming um, down the pike. Um, we, you will need to purchase a cap and gown if you do plan on participating in the graduation ceremony and you'll order that um, through Herf Jones. Herf Jones is the company the entire district uses. Um, I believe the site opens up today. You don't need to purchase your cap and gown today if you want to wait to hear, you know, what's the date, where's the location and the time. Um, but do know the earlier that you purchase your cap and gown, the less expensive it is. The longer you wait, they raise the price higher and higher. Um, so you'll want to order that cap and gown if you plan on participating in ceremonies. If you don't want to participate, that's perfectly fine. And you're welcome to come in um, to the office here to pick up your diploma after graduation, anytime after graduation. Um, if you do order uh, your cap and gown through the Herf Jones, that cap and gown will be delivered here to the school. And I'll get that out to you at graduation rehearsal. So I'm going to hold on to that. Um, and get that to you at one of the last senior meetings that we hold this school year. We'll make sure your um, Chromebooks are turned in, any dual enrollment materials, anything that might be outstanding. Um, and then usually the caps and gowns are dispersed at graduation rehearsal, which will hopefully be in person this school year. Um, if you choose to order announcements, seniors through Herf Jones, those will be sent directly to your, to your home address. Um, you don't necessarily need to use Herf Jones. Um, you can make your own announcements. You can go other places, but they do have lots of um, senior memorabilia you can purchase if you want to, but you don't have to. Um, but there will be more information coming seniors. We will be having just a specific senior meeting um, later on down the road. But this is pretty much just what we have for graduation right now. So just know that there will be a graduation ceremony for sure. Um, I'm feeling face to face, fingers crossed. Um, and again, you will need to purchase a cap and gown. So, okay, seniors and or juniors, just for future reference, you can start looking up the foundation for Lee County Public Schools and the Southwest Florida Community Foundation. Um, they offer some local scholarships for students. Um, I think the Flor Southwest Florida Community Foundation ones are, the, the applications are opening up soon. It's one application for their multiple scholarships. Um, so there's different criteria. If you're a baseball player, there's all kinds of different things. So um, look at those early juniors. You can start looking at them now, seeing what the criteria is, what those applications look like. So you can start preparing for next school year. Um, for seniors and parents this year, for if you're going off to university or technical school, you will need to complete the FAFSA form. This FAFSA form, the free application for federal student aid, is something that your parent will need to complete for you each year that you're in school. So this application is going to determine what grant money, what kind of financial aid are you eligible for? Some of you might find you're eligible for grants, which is money that is given to you and provided that you finish the semester. Um, you don't have to pay that money back. Um, if you need a student loan or a parent loan, if your school you're going to is a little bit more expensive, 
um, or you need to live in a dorm. Um, so your, your grants, your loans, work study on the FAFSA application, I would highly recommend checking yes to everything they offer you. You can always say no thank you at the end. Um, you might want to take out less loan than what they offered you, but this FAFSA form will, will be something that your parent, your guardian will need to complete for you each year that you're in school. Step number one will be to create a PIN number. Uh, you'll need a PIN number, your parent guardian will be a PIN number, so you can go ahead and do that now in preparation, and I would keep all of that information in just one folder so you can access that PIN from year to year because it's kind of a pain um, if you don't remember it. So there is a workshop that's being offered by the Lee County um, Foundation for Public Schools and you can choose to, to go in person or you can choose to go remotely. Um, and Mr. Metzner, do you have that link to, is it in the chat box there for that session? Oh, the uh, it, Yes, it is. It's in, the, the, it's in there too. Through the foundation? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. So um, seniors, that's tomorrow, is it tomorrow or sometime this week? Um, so seniors or parents, if you're interested, if you want to get a, a financial aid 101, if this is your first student in college or your first time around, um, there is going to be a workshop that's offered this week. So please be aware of that. And Ms. Baker, the, the biggest thing about the FAFSA is to know that it takes a good 20 minutes, maybe 30, depending upon you know what you're reading and what you need to go through. Um, the student is going to need their guardian or their parent that's there with them to finish it up, as you know. Um, but it's what you need before you get any free money. So it doesn't matter what scholarships that you might be earning. I mean, it does matter, obviously. Uh, but in order to get those funds, the FAFSA has to be done prior to that and I always recommend I even used to take freshmen through it so they had it for those first three years so make sure that you do that please okay okay so that's pretty much everything that I had for you all today I will hang on here for any general questions um, if you have any individual questions or you want to discuss, you know how to reach me now. Um, thank you so, so much for, for joining. It had a really good turnout today. I'm really pleased. Um, keep up the hard work, you guys. The end of the school year graduation is going to be here before we know it. So just continue to work hard, do the best that you can, and let's get you your diploma and get you on your way. So thanks everybody, have a wonderful day. Reach out if you need anything, if I can help you.